Hello everyone. In this problem we're asked to find out a bunch of things about an electric field that is a combination of um, or, as, or the resultant electric field of two uh, point charges that are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So we're asked to draw the diagram where these are located such that the positive charge with charge plus Q is located at x equals minus a, and the charge with negative charge minus Q is located at x equals plus a. And we're interested in finding the electric field, the net electric field at point P, which is along the um, y-axis at point P, which is also a distance A away from the origin. So this is the diagram here that you should have in mind. So that's what we're interested in, right? We drew the parent point uh, P up here, and now the negative, sorry, the positive charge is located along the negative um, x-axis, and so when we draw the electric field coming from this charge, we just connect the point where the positive charge is located to the point P up here, and the electric field is going to point along this line, and it's going to point away from the positive charge, because remember that the electric field is defined such that it describes the direction in which a positive test charge would move. So if you placed a positive charge at point P, it would want to move away from the positive charge located at minus x equals minus a. Now the opposite happens when we're considering a charge uh, minus q located at x equals plus a. And that's because if I placed a positive charge at point P, it would be attracted towards this point uh, charge minus Q, right? Because if it's a positive charge, then it's going to be attracted to the negative charge. And so the electric field that is coming from the negative charge to point P is going to be an attractive um, electric field that points towards minus Q from the point P. So that's what we have there. Now, the second question or second part is asking, how do the magnitudes compare to each other? How does the magnitude of E plus and E minus compare to each other? Well, the magnitude of the electric field for a point charge is just Q over four pi epsilon naught times R squared, right? So it's given by this formula right over here. And so you can see that the distance between um, positive Q and negative Q to the point P is going to be the same. Right, so you know that this side, uh, or each of the sides of these uh, right-handed triangles here, right, so the y component and the x component of these right-handed triangles are both a. So the distance is going to be actually what we work out later. It's going to be this r minus, which is also equal to r plus, by the way. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times a. So the distance is the same, and all other parameters are also the same. Right, so that means that the um, magnitude of the electric fields are going to be the same, right? Because they are the same distance away. Okay, now for three, part three or question three, um, we're asked to find what is the direction of the resultant electric field. And so since they have the same magnitude and the geometry is symmetric, we know that you know there's going to be an angle um, over here, which we can call theta, and there's going to be an angle here, which we can also call theta. So these make the same angle with the x-axis, and we also have that they have the same magnitude, which means that their y components are actually going to cancel. And so just kind of by vector addition, you can see that the um, resultant direction is going to be along the x-hat direction. Right, so this is again just because the y components cancel because they are the same distance away um, from this point charge P. Um, okay, question four is asking us to find the X and Y components of the electric field due to the negative charge. So here we actually have to work out what the um, distance to the, the distance between the point of interest and the point charge is. So we've already done that, so that's R minus, which we worked out to be um, root uh, 2a, right? This is just a right-handed triangle there. And then we can also work out what the angle is um, at the bottom of the triangle over here. And of course, that's just going to be 45 degrees. Now using this um, and the uh, answer for part two, i.e. the magnitude of the electric field, we see that the magnitude of the electric field is going to be q over four by epsilon naught times r minus squared. 
And now r minus squared um, is just 2 times a squared, right? And so the x component is the cosine of theta multiplying this magnitude. And you can see that if I choose um, you know, this convention that the right is positive x and up is positive y, then this x component is going to be pointing towards the positive um, x direction. So we're going to have that e minus x is e minus times cosine theta. And if you just plug in a bunch of values, and you know that the cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2, then you find that the x component is q over 8 times root 2 times pi times epsilon naught times a squared. So that is the x component of the negative um, electric field, or the, the electric field coming from the negative charge minus q. The y component, on the other hand, now this is going to be pointing down, right? So we know that this is going to be given by minus the magnitude of the electric field times sine theta. And so, of course, sine theta is also, or sine, sine of 45 degrees is also 1 over root 2. So the magnitude doesn't change. And so it's also q over 8 root pi over 2 times pi times epsilon times a squared. But this time, the value is negative because it's pointing down. Now, for 5, we're asked to find the net electric field. And, of course, you can, all you have to do is find the x and y components of the um, positive electric field as well and just add the two together. So if you kind of go through the same geometric steps as we did for part four, um, but for um, the positive charge, then you will find that the x components of the positive charge for the positive electric field is the same as that of the negative electric field, whereas the y component is actually opposite. So the y component of the positive electric field is minus that of the y component of the negative electric field. And so what this means for us is that when we find the net electric field, which is remember is just E plus um, plus E minus, right? And this means that we can add the components uh, together. So we can calculate the electric field component wise. So E of X is equal to E plus X plus E uh, minus x and since these are the same these just double up and so this is going to be um, let me write it this way so it's q over 4 root 2 pi epsilon naught a squared so this is the x component of the net electric field whereas the y component is going to be ey is equal to e plus y plus e minus y, but since these are opposite, this actually becomes zero. So the net electric field is actually this value, or this, this component over here. So we have that E is equal to Q over 4 root 2 pi epsilon naught a squared pointing in the x hat direction. So that is our final answer. Yeah, I hope you had fun with that.